There's a big problem facing new and existing homeowners, the cost of home ownership. With many fixed rate mortgages coming to an end this year, will homeowners be able to afford the higher rates? And given the connection between mortgage defaults and the 2008 financial crisis, is this something we should be concerned about? The rapid growth in housing prices over the past decade isn't something unique to the UK. Housing price growth across many advanced economies has been outpacing inflation for quite some time now. However, there is one aspect that separates a few countries, including the UK, which is the length of a fixed rate on a mortgage. So for example, the typical mortgage in the US is fixed for between 15 and 30 years, but in the UK, the average fixed term is just two to five years. So this means there's close to a million mortgages up for renewal this year who had previously been on a relatively low fixed rate. And there's also last year's renewals where many homeowners may already be feeling the pressure from higher mortgage payments. Ever since the 2008 financial crisis, the Bank of England's short-term policy rate never broke above 1%. And at the same time, the long-term rate, which is typically based on 10-year government bonds, also continued to fall. And this long-term rate is an important factor for debt pricing. If the yield on government debt falls, other debt in the economy, such as mortgages, also declines. Now, as the cost of mortgages fell over the past decade, the price of housing continued to rise. There are various reasons for this, such as low supply, but the lower cost of a mortgage can help offset higher housing prices, maintaining affordability and therefore demand. However, both short-term and long-term interest rates have obviously skyrocketed over the past couple of years. The average five-year fixed rate mortgage has now increased to almost 6% from less than 2% in 2020. So when that fixed rate comes to an end, homeowners need to make a decision. They can either enter a new fixed rate deal at the higher cost, or they can end up on the standard variable rate, SVR. Now, it could be argued that SVR is the way to go at the moment since interest rates are forecasted to begin falling later this year. But according to the BBA mortgage rate, which tracks the variable rate when the fixed rate ends, the SVR is up to around 8%. Either way, in the short term, homeowners with mortgages that are up for renewal will need to either stomach the higher costs, sell and downgrade, or face repossessions. Now, if we're just looking at higher mortgage costs in isolation, many homeowners could probably afford a slightly higher cost. According to the Office of National Statistics, a fixed rate increase from 2% to 6% on a mortgage of £100,000 over 20 years was increased from £424 to £644 a month. Now, on its own, that might not sound too bad. You know, yes, it's a lot, but it's probably manageable. But that's going to be even higher for people with more debt outstanding. And it's not just mortgages that have increased either. Lots of things associated with owning a home or just living in general have also obviously increased. Energy and water bills, food, new furniture, clothing, and so on. It's been over a year now since interest rates began increasing. And the latest data from UK Finance shows that mortgage arrears have also increased to almost 94,000 in Q4 2023, which is up 25% from the year before. Mortgage repossessions did decrease by 5% compared to the previous year, but they still remain relatively high. But interestingly, it's the buy-to-let market which has seen a much bigger increase in arrears and repossessions. Compared to the previous year, arrears are up 124% and repossessions are up 56%. And by the way, just for comparison so we can get some perspective here, arrears reached 216,000 in 2009. So it's not quite at financial crisis levels just yet. But the Bank of England does have quite a bleak outlook on the situation. In their last financial stability report, they estimated that 500,000 households will be spending 70% of their post-tax income on their mortgage by the end of this year. They also estimate that 900,000 households will face a payment increase of more than £500 a month on mortgage payments alone, with a further 5 million households expected to see their payments increase by 2026. Now, what really made the financial crisis bad wasn't necessarily just mortgage defaults and slower price growth. It was because the banks had some pretty extreme exposure to housing, which put the entire banking system at risk of collapse. 
But to be honest, that sort of scenario does seem quite unlikely, especially if we believe the Bank of England's stress tests, which show that the banking system could handle a severe financial crisis. So at a minimum, it's likely to cause a drag on housing prices and therefore economic growth, because if housing prices decline, that could lead to lower spending in the economy due to the wealth effect. However, the housing market also remains chronically undersupplied, with new planning approvals falling. So fewer homes being built will keep supply low, which could therefore limit any price declines. And with rates expected to fall later in the year, that could bring back some demand as mortgage rates also will be falling. And of course, we also can't forget that we have an election later this year here in the UK, and there have been promises of tax cuts. So far, the government has said that these will come from cutting spending, but if they do come unfunded, there could be another sell-off in gilts, which then pushes up longer term interest rates and higher yields on government debt would lead to higher mortgage rates, further threatening affordability. But despite this, the Bank of England doesn't see a systemic risk being caused by the mortgage and housing market. For the time being, it doesn't appear that another 2008 scenario is on our doorstep.